All right, I'm here with Carolyn Knight from the Carolina Marsh Tacky Association. And uh, who's this would you have right behind you trying to nimble on your shoulder? This is Parker Corbin. He is a four-year-old Marsh Tacky gelding. Um, and he's a red roan. Okay. This is coloring. That's, if you notice, he's got the dark head and then the white shading in here. That's the roaning that's uh, is quite common in the Marsh Tacky breed. All right, well, tell us a little bit about the origins of the Marsh Tacky breed. Um, through DNA testing, we were able to determine that they are um, from colonial Spanish horses. Uh, they were, you know, got turned loose, escaped ships, whatever, and ended up on the barrier islands running all the way from South Carolina down to the coast of Georgia all the way to Florida. And basically lived out there as feral, not really wild, because they were domesticated horses at some point and became a feral horses and they've just stayed out there and people on, along the coast for hundreds of years simply would get them use them to pull buggies pull plows you know kids ride to school whatever they were needed for and um, they're specifically adapted to navigating the, the marsh uh, property and stuff or the soft ground things like that and um, as the islands got developed of course they didn't want horses eating the golf courses so uh, several long-time low country families uh, removed the horses off of the islands and in 2007 the livestock conservancy was told about the marsh tackies and they started looking for them and they found about 150 horses so from 2007 to today we have hit about 500 horses so they are still on the critically endangered list and until we hit about a thousand live animals they will stay on the critically endangered list all right uh, so, in the uh, second half of the 18th century, when the Revolutionary War was going on, was this, would you say, in low, South Carolina Low Country, was this the most common horse breed? Oh, yes. Yeah, now, I mean, you know, people brought in thoroughbreds from overseas, you know, things like England and things like that. But because they were a free resource, um, everybody, I mean, that's the common saying is that everybody in the Low Country had a marsh tacky tied out in the yard, mm -hmm. you know, because, like I said, they were there. They're very level horse, level headed horses easy going very smart so they're very quick to get them trained to whatever you need they love uh, being in your pockets per se mm -hmm. uh, we all joke that we have lots of photographs of their noses because anytime you take a photo of them yeah. they're well, i they're see you park trying to lower his mm -hmm. head be you know humble yes. while you're Looking talking about how smart he is yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh what connection do they have to uh, francis marion during the revolution um to date, we have not found documentation that proves Francis Marion ever wrote a Marsh Tacky. So we cannot say 100% yes he did or no he did not. Um, my personal opinion is that if they needed horses, this was war. Horses got killed, died. If you needed to move, you got on whatever horse was available. And as, um, especially as common as they were at as, some point, as, you know, he was almost it's, early It's in there. very yeah. likely. Yeah. Um, again, whether we can ever prove it or not, you know, that's going to be up to historians, people doing research, and trust me, we have a lot of people doing the research mm -hmm. looking for that information. Um, I, we would love to find it, mm -hmm. whether we do or not, you know, we just don't know. Sure. Um, so, but uh, there's, there's no doubt that there were soldiers in the Revolutionary War riding ancestors of today's Marsh County. Sure. All right, well, I appreciate Carolyn, you know, and thank you, Parker, uh, and enjoy you uh, explaining to us about the history of the Marsh Tacky. Thank you. Yeah.